It's been a few months since my last update on Cineguru Max, but in that time, we've been working with our community and with our users to just uh, add some quality of life improvements and some bug fixes as well. And uh, there's a new update to Cineguru Max coming to Steam any day now. And I just wanted to show off a couple of the new commands that we've added to do with actors that just uh, make life a little easier, I think. So we're going to concentrate on this very straightforward setup I've got down here to start with. So it's a single actor. Obviously, we walk into this Cine Trigger Zone and that will trigger him. He's got probably one of the simplest action test texts you could ever have. So he has an idle animation, obviously, to, that he plays when he's not activated. And then when he's activated, he moves to a mark. And he says a line of dialogue. And then, uh, then when he runs out of commands, he goes back to his idle animation. So we can just test that that works. Huh? And of course, like I said, when he gets to the end of his action text, he will just stand there doing his idle animation that we defined at the start of the script. But one of our users came to us and posed us a bit of a challenge, and they said, well, that's fine if you want the idle animation to be the same before the character is activated and afterwards, but what if you don't want that? What if you want the character to be doing a different activity or playing a different animation, and then once the player enters the space and kind of triggers the actor, um, you want them to have a different idle animation. So we've added a command called start underscore anim, and that allows you to define an animation that this character can be doing before the player actually gets to them. So I'll show you what that looks like in practice with uh, some examples here. So here we've got an actor that is busy hammering this wall. This is an animation from the booster pack that you can buy on Steam. Um, but he's only going to do it until I activate him. Once I step through this sort of doorway, uh, he's going to finish what he's doing and he's going to come over and you can imagine he might kind of say a line of dialogue and uh, or, or, or do whatever. And he'll stay there like forever, basically. So we've activated him now. So he, he kind of changes his idle animation to his default one, which is, I think it's idle look around based on how he's moving his head. Um, We've also got another example down here. So here's a, an actor that's just sort of sat on this chair um, and he could be waiting for us to arrive. And as we activate him, he will stand up and he'll walk over. Hear that? He actually says a line of dialogue as well. And then lastly, uh, we've got this hostage character. So you can imagine if uh, perhaps we've been clearing out this base or whatever, um, she'd probably, you know, keep her head down during all the action and then we come over to a certain point and when she realizes the coast is clear she would get up and walk towards us she could i don't know say a line of dialogue or whatever so all of these examples use the start underscore anim command so let me just show you how that works in practice so i've got the action texts here uh, so taking a look at the hammerer to start off with you can see that we start the line with start underscore anim then we have the name of the actor, and then we specify a animation name. We can also specify a speed. Um, and in this case, because we absolutely want to make sure that he's holding his, uh, his weapon, which in this case is uh, his hammer, just put in the show weapon command. I'm not sure if we've covered that in one of the previous tutorial videos, but um, it is covered in the manual. There's a couple of very simple commands that you can use to show or hide weapons in characters. Um, and that's, that's how you show a weapon. Um, so yes, once we activate him, let's just get back onto this uh, screen so we can see what happens. So once we step into this zone, look at him again, uh, he will change his idle animation um, and he will move to mark two, which is obviously this mark here, and he'll say a line. I don't think we've actually added a line to him, so he doesn't actually say anything in, it, in our example, but he would do. Um, and then having run out of commands to execute, he just goes back and loops his idle command basically forever. And for this uh, character that's sitting, it's often quite difficult to do sitting characters because uh, they are a bit challenging to kind of line up with chairs, but he has a pretty straightforward sort of action text when you look at it. Um, he has start underscore anim, that obviously has to be the first line of the action text. Um, seems to want to correct a Satanism for some reason. So start underscore anim, uh, the character name, and then the name of the animation that he's going to play. And he'll loop that indefinitely until he's activated. Once he's activated, the first thing we want him to do is we want him to play an animation. So in this case, it's chair stand up, um, because obviously we want him to 
kind of get up out of his chair and then that's when we define an idle animation i think if we didn't have that line in there um or if we define the idle animation before we define the the animation that he should play to stand up i think he would kind of pop up briefly for like one frame and then he would immediately go back into his um from sat to standing animation which wouldn't look right so in this case we've chosen to play that animation first and then define what the idle animation should be and then he moves to his mark and he says his line and then for the hostage again uh, pretty similar um she's called hostage 2 so the first line of our action text defines what her um animation is again this is from the booster pack um a little bit difficult with the red red squiggly lines but yeah so hostage underscore crouch underscore idle underscore look around that's one that comes in that booster pack and once she's activated the first thing she does is she plays her stand up animation then we switch her idle animation to a look around one so that um if ever there's a gap or a delay or anything elsewhere in the action text she'll she'll play this sort of look around one where she's standing and she moves to her mark she looks at the player Again, the look commands, I'm not sure if we've covered that in a tutorial, but again, it's covered in the manual, but there's a, a number of different ways you can uh, specify what the character looks at. In this case, her head will always follow the player, and then she says a line, but again, we didn't, we didn't define that. So, going back to our policeman, we can put this into practice. So, let's uh, get his action text open. So, we're going to add the line in at the beginning, start underscore anim, and then we have to add the name of the... Uh, the character that's going to perform this animation and then we have to add a named animation and i've shown this before but i'll do it again so uh, a good way to look up animations is to drag in another copy of your character and assign them the play animations behavior and then all of your animations are then listed in these drop downs on the right so uh i mean i'm quite a fan of throw grenade because it's a very big animation it's a very big action so it's obvious that um you know they're, they're doing something different so yeah let's go for throw underscore grenade so we just type in the name of the animation throw underscore grenade we can set a speed we could set it at half speed 0.5 um, and then basically uh, he'll do that animation until uh, we activate him at which point uh, he'll switch to a different idle animation and he'll then move to his mark let's delete this one that we used to look up the animations Double check I saved that policeman one. Yep, I did. Okay, so now when we go into test game, he's going to loop his grenade throwing animation. You can see. And we can like walk right up to him. You know, he's an actor, so he doesn't really respond to um, the player unless he's activated. So we will walk into this zone to activate him. See, he stops doing that. Huh? And he says his one line. Now his idle animation is just... Standing, standing steady. At the moment, you can only define those two animations. Um, so yeah, you can't kind of switch to, to multiple different idle animations. That's uh, that's not something that's been requested of us so far. Whether or not that would be useful, I'm not sure, but um, you can't do it yet. Um, but the other thing I did want to show you was a, a different uh, functionality, and this is to do with how characters move. So um, actually, it's probably best if I go back to test game to show you this one. So uh sorry to the editor so here is a very straightforward scene where we've got an actor i'll put some snow down so you can really see all the different markers we've got here so he's going to be activated when we enter this zone and his action text states that he's going to walk between different marks so we've got mark a mark b and inventively mark c so he will literally just kind of do a little loop um and yeah, so we were challenged by one of our users to come up with a way to allow characters to change their walking animation between different marks because it's all very well and good sort of putting a, putting a character down and, and asking them to move to a mark, um, but by default they will pick their walk animation and sometimes you might not want them to walk, you might want them to run. So what we've done is add a command that allows you to specify between certain marks when you want the character to run or or just do a different walking animation so he starts off by walking and then he runs and then he goes back to walking again so let's take a look at his action text 
Uh, so here it is. So <laughs> his name is Fred. So Fred has an idle animation, and the first command we give him is to move to mark A, which uh, is this one down in the corner here. Um, and he'll because he's um, uh, because he's just a normal actor, and we haven't yet uh, defined a uh, different sort of walk animation for him. Um, he will just do the default, which is walking. Um, but then once he gets to mark A, we've got these two commands. So we've got move start and we've got move loop. So move start, you'll see this better actually if I pop another version of him down. So let's uh, let's go into play animation and see what that looks like. Uh, you've got these animations called walk uh, start, walk loop and walk stop. The walk start is like a few frames of just him kind of uh, just going into a walking animation. The loop is obviously the loopable part of that animation, so that's kind of left foot, right foot, and then back to left foot again. And then there's the stop animation, which we're not actually using in this instance, but uh, it doesn't really matter too much. Um, but you can see he also has a running start and running stop animation. So uh, we can change what those animations are. So um, you can see what we've done here with um, adding the move start command and then we say run start so we're changing the the move start from its default which would be walk start to run start and we're changing move loop from the default of walk loop to run loop and we get him to run to mark b um, but then when he gets there we want to change it back so we then have to redefine what his move start and move loop uh, animations should be so in this case we've defined it as walk start and walk loop okay so we could try doing it with run aim see if that works so uh, run aim start and run aim loop and that's anim aim there we go run aim loop so in theory should now have his gun raised. Guy, or no, let's just move him, move him away, move him over here. Uh, he should have his gun raised when he runs to that last mark. So I'm going to kind of get a bit involved here. So let's let him walk to mark A. Then he's going to run to mark B, and he runs with his gun up towards mark C. That's quite cool. So yes, um, definitely encourage experimenting with this. Um, obviously, it requires you to have a start and loop animation. Um, at the moment, we're not too bothered about having a stop animation, but um, when you're adding custom animations to your characters, make sure you've got both of those so you can define them, and then that way you can kind of get your character to move in the way you want them to. So, like I said, this is an update that's coming to uh, Steam very, very shortly. Just want to say big thank you to everyone that's uh, ordered Siniguru so far, Siniguru Max, and is really enjoying it. Um, we're really enjoying seeing what other people are doing with the software, doing with the, uh, the add-on. Um, and yeah, just uh, wish you all the best for what you're going to create because uh, yeah, I, I think you can create some pretty cool stuff now with, uh, with this tool set. So yeah, it's cool to see. All right, until next time, take care. Bye. <laughs>